known for Mac Shade Tech, homie Hi, I'm Matt Shadetech. I'm a producer and DJ based in Brooklyn, New York. I'm also the senior logic instructor for DubSpot and for DubSpot Online. In this video, we're going to take a look at some sound design techniques using Logic's ES2 synthesizer. And what we're gonna focus on is using the ES2's sidechain input. Now, a lot of people, when they think about sidechaining, they instantly think about compression. But in fact, sidechain is just an input. So there's a lot of things besides compressors which have a sidechain input, and synthesizers are one of them. Now, this is gonna be a little bit more of an advanced video. I try to cover a range of skill levels. And if you're looking for something a little more basic, you can check out the previous video in this series where I talk about how I use the chords in this track to create all the other melodic material. But in this case, I'm gonna assume you've worked with the ES2 a little bit and you have some knowledge of it. So I'm not gonna go into total detail about how all the sounds were created. I'm gonna focus more on the side chain aspect of this. And I do have some videos. I have a two part series about creating a dubstep wobble bass, which is on the DubSpot channel. And there is also a tutorial about creating a subby 808 style kick, which I'm actually using in this track. You can check that out on the DubSpot channel as well. Those are both using the ES2 and, you know, might help you get up to speed a little bit. So I'll just play you my little example track here, and then we'll talk about how I use this side chaining technique to create some of the parts. <laughs> So let's take a look at this pad sound. This is the main sound that's using the side chaining. So what we've got, right, if we're going to do side chaining, first of all, I'll show you the panel here um, if you want to copy the settings. But what we are going to need to do side chaining is some type of audio source for the side chain input to listen to. So in this case, I'm using this. 808 style kick. Now what I've done is I've made a copy of it using new track with duplicate setting. That's this ghost boom track down here. And I actually simplified, if we look at the MIDI, I simplified the MIDI quite a bit. I muted out a bunch of the kicks, so it's, it's pretty simple. And so what we get with those two together is this. So the side chaining part is that wow, wow, right? If we listen without the ghost kick. So a lot of the interest in this sound is coming from that side chaining technique. So the way that this is working is, so first of all, what I've got is I've got my ghost boom, right? This is my copy of my, my sub. And I've just taken it, I'm routing it into bus 10 right I'm assigning it to bus 10 and then bus 10 I've got this set to no output here I took the the where it said stereo output and I changed it to no output because I want this to be silent right it's just going to be used as a sidechain controller and that's why I call it a ghost boom instead of just your regular boom and so then inside the ES2 here what I've got, and keep in mind, this is the ES2, this is the pad ES2, right? Not the one for the ghost. Inside my pad sound now, the side chain input up here is set to bus 10. So this is listening through the side chain input 
to the amplitude, the volume of that ghost boom. Then what I've done next, so I, this is like a little detuned saw pad sound. And if you wanna just look at the settings here and copy them, uh, by all means go ahead. Or if you wanna do your own thing, you know, I encourage that as well. But what I'm using is here in the modulation router, I bypassed the cutoff envelope control, which is the default. And I'm using the, and so just as a starting point, what I recommend for this before we even go any further is I'm using tutorial settings, analog saw in it. You might like the analog saw unison as well. It'll get you to a similar place. And then I just bypass the envelope control. So the envelope two is no longer controlling the cutoff of the filter. Then what I've got is in here, I'm assigning pitch one, two, and three to listen to the side chain, side ch down here. So the source is gonna be side chain and the target is gonna be pitch one, two, and three. Now I'll just turn off the other one by bypassing it for a second. And I've set the amount here at 0.54. I'm not using it all the way up. And that's because I'm actually using the pitch. I'm pitch bending the, the chords when the kick hits. So it sounds like this. I'll just turn it up really extreme so you can hear it. Now this you could use to make like rave sounds if we just crank the cutoff way up. That wasn't really the vibe that I was going for, although I definitely have used it to do that um, in other tracks. This one's like a little more, a little more dreamy, so I didn't really want to get so so full on ravey with that. So I'm just using the cutoff to darken it down quite a bit. And then over here, I'm using the same side chain input, and in this case, I'm actually targeting cutoff two, right, which is the the low pass filter that I'm using here. And then I've got some resonance turned up at 0.38. I've got the cutoff set at 0.354. And what this is giving us is, I'll just turn off the pitch part for a sec. So when that kick hits, it's giving us that wow. So it's moving the cutoff based on when the kick hits or based on when it gets volume uh, from the side chain source. So then we put them both together and we get this. Which I thought was pretty cool. And then there's another sound using the same technique here, which is this saw lead. And this is actually, I think I might, have, this might just be a copy of the other one that I that I tweaked a little bit, I can't remember. But let's see here, let's open up our saw lead. Here we go. Okay, so what I've got here is instead of, so this is how it sounds, first of all. Here it is without the side chaining. With the side chaining. So actually I'm doing something very similar here. This this one is actually inactive. So I'm really, I'm just using this cutoff one and two using the side chain. I've got the resonance cranked up a bit. It's actually pretty similar in setting to the other one. You could probably just make a copy of the other synth and set it up in a similar way. And then, so I'm just having it, when it triggers, it's moving that cutoff. And so we're getting those bright little hits and it's kind of popping out. You can kind of season to taste with resonance. I'm using kind of hot, you can crank it up. If you want it more kind of chirpy. Or a cutoff, if you have the cutoff too high, it's not gonna really have so much effect. So you gotta find that little sweet spot there. But yeah, I think this is a pretty fun technique and it's a cool way to just get the elements in your track kind of vibing with each other and bouncing off each other. 
um, and to get a feeling of relatedness between the different parts. And I think definitely with this pad, it's a little bit more minor what I'm doing with the with the lead, but with the pad sound, I feel like this is adding a lot of character to the pad and adding some nice rhythm to the pad. So it's not just kind of boring like whole notes and giving it a little bit of movement and moving with the rhythm of the drums. And of course we can go in here and sequence whatever kind of pattern we want, right? That's what's cool about side chaining as opposed to using an LFO or an envelope is I could do like a crazy long sequence of, of kicks or whatever, doing all kinds of different stuff, which would control my synthesizing and cause all different types of effects. So. I'll just show you, like here it is, if I just turn all of the kicks on, it's gonna sound a little crazy, but. You know, that's not, not what I was going for in this case, but could be good for your track. So I hope this was useful for you. And if you wanna learn more stuff like this, you can check out our online course at dubspot.com or you can come and join us at our school in Manhattan in New York City. If you want to learn more about me and my music, you can check me out at mattshadetech.com and also be on the lookout for my new album, which will be dropping early next year. Thanks for watching. Welcome to DubSpot. We believe in providing you hands-on experience right away. Whether you're completely new to music and want to turn the sounds in your head into a musical reality, or you're an experienced artist looking to refine your skills and add new tools to your arsenal, we're ready to meet you at your level. For students of all ages, all levels, and all styles of music, DubSpot is here to help you achieve your goals. With course offerings both online wherever you are and at our school in the heart of New York City, we are ready to guide you through the next phase of your musical transformation. Whether you want to produce music, DJ or do both, you've come to the right place. Come explore DubSpot for yourself. Become a part of our community and make music.